Welcome to Who Died Today America, your daily source for remembering and honoring the lives of those who have passed and the legacies of the most notable personalities. Keith Gattis, a respected talent in country music and beyond. Renowned American singer, songwriter and guitarist, Keith Gattis has left an indelible mark on the country and rock music scenes throughout his career, which spanned over two decades. Born on May 26, 1971 in Austin, Texas, Gattis began his musical journey as a session guitarist, working alongside accomplished artists such as Dwight Yoakam and Randy Travis. However, it wasn't long before he discovered his passion for songwriting, penning hits for prominent musicians like George Strait and Kenny Chesney. Known for his unique blend of country and rock, Gattis released several albums, including Big City Blues and Till the Wheels Fall Off. Collaborating with a multitude of artists, including Miranda Lambert and Ashley Monroe, Gattis garnered critical acclaim and a loyal fan base, solidifying his status as a respected figure within the music industry. Gattis also made a name for himself as a successful producer with his studio Pioneer Town Recording, attracting a diverse array of talented musicians. Producing music for artists such as Waylon Payne, Kendall Marvel, Wade Bowen and Randy Hauser, Gattis's contributions to the country music scene have been significant and impactful. As of 2023, Keith Gattis's net worth was estimated to be around $5 million, reflecting his dedication and commitment to the music industry. Although his net worth might not be as high as some of his contemporaries, it is still an impressive figure for someone who primarily worked behind the scenes as a songwriter and producer. Recently, rumors circulated on social media about Gattis's death in a car accident at the age of 52. The music industry and fans of Gattis's work would undoubtedly mourn the loss of such a talented musician and producer. Regardless, Keith Gattis's legacy as an influential figure in country music and beyond will continue to inspire musicians for generations to come. Tributes to Keith Gattis. Linda Miles, a multifaceted creative force in theatre, television and literature. Linda Miles, a talented writer, actress, playwright, memoirist and short fiction writer, leaves a lasting legacy in the worlds of theatre, television and literature. She passed away at 83 years old. With an illustrious career that spanned various creative fields, Miles showcased her unique gifts and left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry. Miles made her Broadway debut in Neil Simon's Plaza Suite, sharing the stage with renowned actors Maureen Stapleton and George Scott. As an actress, she portrayed Sally Fairfax, a friend of George Washington, in David L. Wolper's TV drama The World Turned Upside Down, alongside her first husband, Jan Layton. Her writing career flourished as her first play, Wives, was selected for the prestigious Eugene O'Neill National Playwrights Conference and performed at Theatre Row. Miles' short story, a Lucky Man, was featured in the inaugural issue of The Creative Writer, a book series from J.D. Vine Publications. Her play 13 garnered acclaim, with performances in New York and at the ACT Theatre in Seattle. Miles's writing talents extended to television, where she contributed to popular soap operas such as General Hospital, Santa Barbara, Guiding Light, As the World Turns, Loving, and One Life to Live. As an editor and contributor to the memoirgroup.com, Miles further demonstrated her passion for storytelling. Throughout her career, Miles received numerous awards and nominations, including two Daytime Emmy Awards and six Daytime Emmy Award nominations for her work on Santa Barbara. She also earned a Writers Guild of America Award for scriptwriting and the 2007 John Gardner Memorial Prize for Fiction for her short story, The Blue Dress. In her personal life, Miles was married to actor Jan Layton and together they had a daughter, Hallie Layton. Linda Miles' diverse contributions to theatre, television and literature will continue to inspire and captivate audiences for generations to come. Tributes to Linda Miles. Valda Setterfield a beacon of postmodern dance and lasting legacy. Valda Setterfield, an iconic figure in the world of postmodern dance, passed away at the age of 88. 
best known for her long collaboration with her husband, renowned choreographer David Gordon, Setterfield's theatrical presence and versatility left a lasting impact on the dance community. Born in Margate, England in 1934, Setterfield discovered her passion for dance at a young age. She trained with notable dancers and teachers like Marie Rambert and Tamara Karsavina before moving to New York in the 1950s. There, she studied with Merce Cunningham and James Waring, where she met her future husband, David Gordon. Setterfield's career spanned over six decades, and she played a significant role in shaping the postmodern dance movement. She was often Gordon's onstage partner, an association that began before their marriage in 1961 and continued until their final season at the Museum of Modern Art in New York in 2018. Her ties with Merce Cunningham, as a dancer in his company, a teacher of his technique, and one of his trusted friends, endured for decades. Together with her husband, Setterfield pushed the boundaries of dance and theatricality, earning the nickname The Barrymores of Postmodern Dance. She collaborated with her son, Ayn Gordon, on several occasions, and the family even won an Obie Award for their work in the off-Broadway play The Family Business in 1995. Setterfield's diverse roles throughout her career, including working with notable artists like Brian De Palma and Woody Allen, further demonstrate her versatility and unique presence in the world of dance and film. She received numerous awards and accolades, including a Herald Angel Award at the 2016 Edinburgh Festival for her role in Lear and several New York Dance and Performance Awards, also known as the Bessie. Valda Setterfield leaves behind a remarkable legacy that has inspired generations of dancers and choreographers. Her theatricality, passion and innovative spirit have left an indelible mark on the dance community and she will be fondly remembered for her immense contribution to the world of dance. Tributes to Valda Setterfield Dale Meeks, a dynamic actor and cherished friend. Dale Meeks, the talented actor known for his roles in Emmerdale, Biker Grove and The Hunt for Raoul Moat, has passed away at the age of 47. His family announced the news on Facebook, expressing their grief and gratitude for the outpouring of support they've received. While the cause of death has not been confirmed, his loss is deeply felt by friends, colleagues and fans alike. Meeks first gained attention for his role as Greg, the leader of a rival youth club in the teen TV drama Biker Grove. The show, which launched the careers of several stars, including Ant McPartlin and Declan Donnelly, showcased Meeks's dynamic acting abilities. McPartlin and Donnelly paid tribute to their fellow Biker Grove alumni on Twitter, describing him as the loveliest of guys and a sad loss at such a young age. Meeks' acting talents extended beyond television as he also enjoyed a successful stage career. He appeared in productions such as The Producers at the Royal Exchange Theatre in Manchester, A Christmas Carol at the West Yorkshire Playhouse, and the UK tour of the hit show Chicago. He even graced the West End stage in the production of Love Never Dies. In addition to his acting prowess, Meeks was an accomplished singer, winning ITV's Stars in Their Eyes celebrity special, alongside fellow Emmerdale actor Mark Charnock as the Blues Brothers. His passion for performance and dedication to his craft left a lasting impression on those who had the pleasure of working with him. Dale Meeks's legacy will be remembered for his remarkable talent, warm personality, and unwavering dedication to the arts. Friends, family, and fans will undoubtedly cherish the memories and laughter he brought into their lives. As we mourn his passing, we also celebrate the profound impact he had on the entertainment industry and the lives he touched along the way. Tributes to Dale Meeks Herb Douglas, a pioneering athlete and trailblazer in African-American sports history. Herbert Paul Douglas Jr., an American former athlete and Olympic medalist, leaves behind a lasting legacy of breaking barriers and inspiring generations of African-American athletes. As a competitor in the long jump, Douglas showcased his exceptional talent on the world stage and made a significant impact on the history of sports in the United States. At the 1948 Summer Olympics in London, Douglas represented the U.S. and won a bronze medal in the long jump, 
an achievement that would solidify his place in the annals of American sports. Prior to the 2012 Summer Olympics, Douglas was recognized as the oldest living African-American Olympic medalist, a testament to his enduring presence in the world of athletics. Douglas's journey to success began in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where he graduated from Taylor Alderdice High School in 1940. As Alderdice's first black basketball player, Douglas was a pioneer in breaking racial barriers in high school sports. His accomplishments were later acknowledged with his induction into the school's Alumni Hall of Fame in 2009. Douglas continued to make strides in athletics as he attended Xavier University of Louisiana and later the University of Pittsburgh. During his college years, he contributed to his team's victory at the 48th Annual Penn Relays in Philadelphia and was inducted into the inaugural class of the University of Pittsburgh Sports Hall of Fame in 2018. Off the field, Douglas was a dedicated member of the Alpha Phi Omega Service Fraternity, demonstrating his commitment to serving his community. Having turned 100 in March 2022, he passed away at 101 years old. Herbert Paul Douglas Jr.'s life stands as an extraordinary testament to the power of perseverance and the importance of breaking down barriers in sports. His achievements as an athlete and his trailblazing efforts in African-American sports history will continue to inspire future generations. Tributes to Herb Douglas Rebecca Tepper, a beloved Swedish actress and a touching legacy. Rebecca Tepper, a prominent Swedish actress known for her memorable roles in various films and television series, has passed away after a period of illness at the age of 50. Her family confirmed her passing to Afton Bladé. With a career that spanned decades, Tepper left a lasting impact on the Swedish entertainment industry and her fans. Born in 1972, Rebecca Tepper was the daughter of accomplished actor Basia Friedman. She began her career in the television soap Rederie and went on to star in other notable Swedish productions such as Skargard's Doktorn, Hundtricket and Bonus Familien. However, she was perhaps best recognized for her role as Lusan in the popular series Solsidan. In Solsidan, Tepper portrayed Mikan's best friend Lusan, bringing warmth and depth to the character. Felix Herngren, the series creator, expressed his admiration for Tepper's performance and the impact she had on the cast and crew. Unfortunately, due to her illness, Tepper was unable to participate in the latest season of the show. Tepper was married to author and singer Carl Johan Valgren, and together they navigated both the highs and lows of life. As she leaves behind a touching legacy on the screen, those who knew her personally and professionally will remember her fondly. Rebecca Tepper's contributions to Swedish film and television will not be forgotten. Her talent and warmth will continue to be celebrated and cherished by fans and fellow actors alike. Tributes to Rebecca Tepper. Fernando Sanchez Drago, a prolific writer and journalist, leaves an enduring legacy. Fernando Sanchez Drago, the renowned Spanish writer and journalist, he passed away at the age of 86 due to a cardiac arrest. His environment confirmed his passing to Europa Press. Drago was in his house in Castilfrio de la Sierra Soria at the time of his death. Mere hours before his passing, he shared a photo with his cat Nano on social media. Throughout his career, Drago penned numerous novels, including El Dorado, The Sources of the Nile, The Path of the Heart, The Labyrinth Test. Planet Award, Parallel Deaths, Fernando Lara Novel Award 2006, and Soseki, Immortal and Tiger. He was also the author of the essays Gargoris y Habidis. Drago was a recipient of the Ondas Award for his work in El Mundo por Montera and the National Prize for the Promotion of Reading for Black on White. He directed the nightly news program Night Diary on Telemadrid and was most recently in command of The White Knights. He was also a columnist, reporter, and regular contributor to El Mundo. His journalistic work is partially collected in the four volumes of At Dragon Tea and The Big Bad Wolf. Fernando Sanchez Drago's prolific career as a writer and journalist leaves behind an enduring legacy. 
His works, imbued with passion and insight, will continue to inspire and influence readers for generations to come. Tributes to Fernando Sanchez Drago. Willie McCarter, a trailblazer in basketball and a legacy of excellence. Willie McCarter, a former Drake All-American guard and basketball coach, leaves behind an enduring legacy of excellence on and off the court. Over his storied career, McCarter made significant contributions to the world of basketball as a player and a mentor. He passed away at 76 years old. As a standout player at Drake University, McCarter was known for his exceptional scoring abilities, leading the Bulldogs to the 1969 NCAA Final Four. He set school records for field goals in a season and in a career, and his name is forever etched in Drake's history as one of its greatest players. McCarter's athletic prowess earned him numerous accolades, including being named to the Drake All-Century Team, MVC Men's Basketball 50 Greatest Players, and his induction into the Indiana Hall of Fame in 2019. After his successful college career, McCarter continued to make an impact in the professional basketball arena. He played two seasons with the Los Angeles Lakers and one season with the Portland Trailblazers. McCarter's dedication to the sport extended beyond his time as a player, as he went on to serve as the head basketball coach at Detroit Mercy from 1979 to 82, sharing his knowledge and passion with a new generation of athletes. Beyond his accomplishments on the basketball court, McCarter was known for his strong character and commitment to his family. He fulfilled a promise to his mother by buying her a house after making it to the NBA, demonstrating the love and loyalty that defined him as a person. McCarter's former teammate and close friend Dolph Pulliam described their bond as one of brotherhood, spanning more than six decades. Their friendship serves as a testament to the lasting connections McCarter forged throughout his life. As we pay tribute to Willie McCarter, we celebrate a life well lived marked by exceptional talent, dedication, and the lasting impact he made on the world of basketball. His legacy will continue to inspire future generations of athletes and fans alike. Tributes to Willie McCarter. Ernie Barrett a lifelong commitment to Kansas State athletics. Ernie Barrett, a former Boston Celtics forward and Kansas State University legend, passed away at the age of 93 in his hometown of Manhattan, Kansas. Barrett spent 75 years at Kansas State as an athlete, coach, and administrator, leaving an indelible mark on the university's athletic program. A Kansas high school basketball legend in the 1940s, Barrett led Wellington High School to its only state championship. He went on to play for Kansas State under Hall of Fame coaches Jack Gardner and Tex Winter. Barrett was instrumental in guiding the Wildcats to the national championship game in 1951, where they ultimately fell to Adolph Rupp's Kentucky team. Drafted by the Celtics with the seventh pick in the 1951 draft, Barrett deferred his NBA career for two years to serve in the Air Force. He played two seasons alongside Celtics great Bob Cousy before returning to his alma mater in 1955 to work with the Alumni Association. Barrett then became an assistant coach for Winter in 1958, helping the Wildcats reach the Final Four twice in six seasons. Barrett transitioned into an administrative role in 1963 and served as Kansas State's athletic director from 1969 to 1975. He continued to work as a consultant and director of development until his retirement in 2007, remaining active with volunteer work afterwards. Longtime Kansas State football coach Bill Snyder praised Barrett, calling him one of the greatest K-Staters in the world and highlighting his dedication to promoting the university and its athletics program. A popular figure among students, Barrett was known for offering firm handshakes, a gesture immortalized in the bronze statue outside Bramlage Coliseum. Wildcats football coach Chris Kleeman fondly remembered Barrett's deep care for Kansas State and his efforts to make the university a better place. Ernie Barrett is survived by his wife of 72 years, Bonnie, their son Brad, and grandson Ryan. He was preceded in death by his parents, Ernie and Ruby Barrett, and his son Dwayne. His lifelong commitment to Kansas State Athletics leaves behind a rich legacy. Tributes to Ernie Barrett.
Ron Patch Hamilton, a lasting legacy in children's Christian music Ron Patch Hamilton, the creative force behind the beloved Patch the Pirate series of Christian recordings for children, leaves a lasting legacy in the world of faith-based music. He passed away at 72 years old. With his unique combination of storytelling, music and faith, Hamilton touched the hearts and lives of countless children and families worldwide. After losing his left eye to cancer, Hamilton embraced his appearance by creating the character of Patch the Pirate, a role model who used song and story to teach Christian values to young listeners. Alongside his family, who performed various characters, Hamilton released dozens of albums, from his 1981 debut, Sing Along with Patch the Pirate, to his most recent work, 2021's Whale of a Tale. Hamilton's adventures as Patch the Pirate reached a global audience through radio broadcasts and animated videos, providing entertainment and spiritual guidance to children everywhere. In addition to his work as a singer and songwriter, Hamilton served as a music pastor at Calvary Baptist Church in Simpsonville, South Carolina, and played a significant role in running the record label Majesty Music with his family. Ron Patch Hamilton's commitment to uplifting and educating young listeners through his musical talents has left an indelible mark on the Christian music landscape. His work will continue to resonate with children and families for generations to come, ensuring that his message of faith, love and hope endures. Tributes to Ron Patch Hamilton Thanks for watching Who Died Today America. If you enjoyed this tribute, please give it a thumbs up and share with friends. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more inspiring stories. Leave a comment below telling us who inspired you the most. See you in the next video.